this is a food and this is an energy. So your thoughts, these thoughts are food. I hope that I can language things in a way that I am giving you what you need to do. And I'm going to see what I can do to stick to this kind of a language uh, rather than saying what you shouldn't and then tell you what you shouldn't do. Um, I'm going to stick with as much as possible kind of what you should be doing. So there's going to be a little metaphor that's happening underneath and I'm going to be communicating to your other conscious minds about things. So you can sit back and, and relax. I know I always ask everybody, well, what would you like me to do? Kind of pep you up a little bit or mellow you out? And I've just decided I'm going to pep everybody up just a little bit. And then I'm going to mellow you out a little bit. Okay. somebody will live for us. We love this. And uh, I spent quite some time in Africa. I just had the clothes that I had on my back. And I spent quite some time in Africa. And I just had a pair of rubber gum boots, not carrying anything. And I completely went on the foot tracks. And I completely was at the providence of the people where I went. And some days I'll, uh, for quite some time, maybe six, seven days would pass by and I wouldn't eat a thing. And sometimes, uh, quite some time passed before I even had the ability to drink something. It never was a concern to me. When I got back uh, from Africa, I got a post at New York University. And um, so uh, I was with all the faculty. It was kind of around about Christmas time. I found myself sitting with a group of people, kind of listening to people talk about things. And we'd brought, brought someone in to kind of play some musical instruments and uh, a few people singing and this sort of thing. And I was sitting and all of a sudden, Ethel from the Bronx started to sing. And there was something kind of a little grating about Ethel's voice. And uh, I turned around like everyone else. And I found myself kind of just like looking at Ethel. And all of a sudden I realized something. <clears throat> Ethel had mesmerized 
every single person in the room. And I suddenly realized what it takes to be an artist, whether you're a songwriter, a poet, a painter. Ethel was living every single word that she sang. So we love it when someone will live for us. And we can't stand it when someone is a little dissociated. And we love it when somebody will live for us. And we all know the difference when you watch somebody who's a comedian, and all of a sudden, you know, that comedian loses it. She or he loses it, right? What has happened just in that moment is that person's consciousness has gone outside themselves, and they're kind of like looking back at themselves. And we can't stand that. We feel like uncomfortable for the person. And we love it when someone will remain integrated. What about these comedians? They can crack the driest joke, right? Like David Letterman, right, for instance. He can crack stuff that's not even funny. Right? But he'll, you know, he just is like waiting there. <laughs> Everybody thinks that's funny. <laughs> We love it when someone will live for us. So, uh, this is a very typical Native American flute. And for the last 15 years, I've been studying uh, with a Seminole Indian medicine woman. So I bring in quite a bit of uh, Native American teaching. And this uh, particular flute was made in the Miyakisha mountain range. And uh, this cane grows native to that area. And the natives took this cane and they traded it all the way across this nation. And uh, you know, the Native Americans, it's a very funny thing that they put people on the end of everything. So they say the rock, people. The tree, people. And every single thing in nature they put people on the end of it. And their whole belief and philosophy is that life evolved through the rocks. And every single aspect that we are made of, you can find individually in nature. You can find bubbles, which is like the cellular cell. You can find algae that lives inside that bubble, like the mitochondria of our cells. You can find individual little lysomes, which is little enzymes, basically, which help digest materials within the cell, living in a saphritic relationship with each other in that bubble. And you can find somatids, and I'm going to talk tonight about some new discoveries that no hardly any physician in this area has heard of yet that you'll be the first people to hear about some of these discoveries. That we have a very primitive life force that's within us. And what this life force does, and I may share some things about cancer, and also maybe some things about AIDS. And I'm positive that I'm going to shock you, memories, and your feelings about things. And it's quite possible that I'm going to say some stuff tonight that's thoroughly contrary to what people are being taught in nutrition and what people are even understanding about biology. I've studied with some of the top people in this world 